I've always wanted to do a show with women of different generations, backgrounds, and views. Hello, boys, girlies, girls, and non-binaries of the internet. I am Sarah Kellyson, the host of The View History. So let's deep dive and thrive and have a conversation about all about ABC's The View, which is in its 25th season currently. So let's get into it. So, um... It's been a while since we chatted. I'm so glad we're chatting again. I'm so glad we're going to do all the gossip like it's the nail salon. As you know, I usually like to um, go about this show in a way. Um, But there's been a lot that's went on. First off, I want to say the ladies are getting a vacation. That's right. They are going to the Bahamas in a few weeks. And I'm super excited. And I'm so glad they get a vacation. I think it's deserved. And after all these years of not having one, they haven't done one since 2017, um, March 2017, when they went to Disney World in Florida. And um, that one was so much fun. So I'm excited to see what this one brings. I hope... I think it's just going to be the regular ladies like Whoopi, Joy, Sunny, Sarah, and I think Anna will be there for the entire week, and so that'll be five. I don't see them bringing a guest co-host or anything, but um, we'll see how it goes. Like, we'll see what it's like. Um, if they bring a guest co-host, they should really bring Lindsay Granger because I think she would be the life of the party. Just saying, but you know how it is. Um, so, oh my God, this thing is so not staying. Okay, it needs to stay. I'm just going to bring it closer. Okay, there. I feel better about it. Okay, so today, today's topic is going to be what Barbara's seat really is and just the evolution of that in general. Because originally it was four ladies at the table back in 1997. And Usually it would just be Barbara being there two days a week and then Joy coming in as the rotation because Joy was originally the OG Friday girl. Fun, and I'd like to be on every day, but I just can't be because I do have some other things that I do. And when I am not on, I want you to meet my counterpart. We are extremely uh, similar. <clears throat> I want you to meet my, my pal, Joy Behar. And Joy, tell everybody about you. They've been keeping me in the broom closet all this time, but now I'm here, and on Wednesday I'm breaking out, you know that. Yeah, I know it. And we'll do a whole episode on that at some point about Friday Girls and everything, because I there's a whole line of history for that as well. Barbara's seat was pretty much the journalist seat in a way. And people have always wondered, they, there was no definition to it really, but the best way to describe it is it being... Uh, a seed of journalists, which is what they had throughout even after Barbara left, and we're going to get into that as well. But Barbara pretty much was there to give an objective opinion, not coming from a biased place, really, and she had to separate her own internal bias. She had to do more research in a way, and I think that defined Barbara perfectly because that's what her position on the show really is. And, you know, Barbara Walters, BW, true legend, no question about it. But, you know, she was a tough one. She was really tough. Um, Honestly, she paved the way for many of the girls, the girlies in the business. So we have to, you know, give it up to her for that. Um, And just women in general. Women in general. She really made a true impact um, to this. And the show would have never lasted as long because of her it really would have not i don't think it would have lasted even a year without her truthfully because she paved the work for not just women journalists but also women in daytime and panel shows in daytime with her idea of the view and in the beginning she did not have much faith in it She didn't, and some people behind the scenes did not have much faith in it back then. They were like, oh, they didn't think it was going to last. They truthfully didn't, but it did. And I think think a big reason why many people from all realms respects BW is because, 
you know, she was giving an independent perspective. Truthfully, she wasn't trying to give a bias necessarily. She was trying to give it for what it is, even though sometimes she did have a bias and you could tell that she didn't, if she didn't like something certain, she'd make it clear that she didn't like it. If you are a parent, do not bring your child to this movie. There are close-ups, which Joy did not mention, yeah, of what? penises and pubic oh, hair, yeah. as close as this, with it wagging like this. All right, now this is going to make you all want to go to see this movie, and that's why I'm sorry to go through this. That's a, uh, uh, Tell us more, Barbara. I'm, I'm a virgin. This is, this is insightful, though, because I'm a virgin. Joy is a uh, supposedly an Austrian homosexual. This is a movie that purports to make people who are homophobic no more. I think this will make people, if you're not homophobic, it can make you. I don't need to know how you are doing anal intercourse. Oh, wow. You all want to go serious? see this movie now, right? Wow. I also mind the fact <laughs> that, again, like Borat, it takes unsuspecting people, the little people, and makes fun of them. But... Um, for the most part, she had to be independent in order to be a true, respected journalist. And a lot of people in all realms of media have nothing but respect for her. I mean, look at her last day. There were every form of woman on television that was there, you know, and from the past decades and that were currently on air at the time back in 2014 that just have so much respect for her. And I think every co-host of The View, even the ones that didn't thrive with her as much, say that, you know, they ha she was tough, but they have a respect for her. And, you know, I think the best type of training you could get from someone is from someone who has an independent perspective on the world, who's not going to judge you based off of what you believe, but she's going to judge you based off of how you say it and how you go about it and how saying things is so important and how you say it is important as well. And so I'm giving Barbara Walters BW her flowers there. So, and I see why she raised so many amazing co-hosts, like so many, like all the co-hosts she raised are like either this is for my girls tier or an A tier co-host. I, all of them, really, truthfully. I don't put anyone lower. Like, nope, that is not correct. Um, so when she left the show in 2014, they kind of, it felt like for after season 17, for season 18, they didn't have anyone in that seat particularly because they didn't have someone who was a journalist that was on that panel at the time. And... It was kind of like a dedication to her. I felt like they it was like a sign of respect not to have anyone in the seat because that seat is truly hers. And I I kind of like that. I don't think we necessarily need a journalist there necessarily. Like it's not required. It's more just to fill in the space a little bit. But um you know, it felt very, it felt very it did kind of feel empty with four. Sometimes they would have five in season eighteen, but that's when they started struggling really. And truthfully, for season nineteen, they did want to have a journalist there because there were so many people that were just coming in and out that they couldn't really ri risk having four panelists and then just having three people. What like what if one or two people leave? And then they have two rotating seats this entire season. Like, they can't... They, there's already so much damage control they needed to do with season 18 to get into season 19 that they needed to fill all positions. They needed all hands on deck for season 19 in order to revive the show. So with that said, they hired ABC journalist and news anchor Paula Ferris to technically replace Barbara, which is like... A huge, you really can't replace Barbara at the end of the day. You really, really can't. Like, she's irreplaceable. But in, in terms of Paula Ferris's legacy, in terms of just world news, she just did ABC World News on her belt. And she I do think she has a journalism degree. But she doesn't have the impact that BW had. She just didn't. And so that's a hard name to live up to. And... Season 19 was very odd because Candace Cameron Bure was supposed to be the conservative, but honestly, it looked like Paula Ferris was doing the job more because Candace had, she could not really, here's the issue with her. Here's the biggest issue. Her biggest mistakes were, 
Well, not mistakes necessarily. Okay, well, one of them is a mistake. She relied H way too much on her speaking about the Bible. It was like Zeus and lightning bolts every day. And honestly, you can't rely on God to defend the conservative talking points, truthfully. You need to speak about it politically, not off of just God itself, religion. That can be an aspect of it socially. And actually, Megan... McCain said in Rami Institute's book that Candace Cameron Bure was only socially conservative but not, but not politically. She's the type of person that only would, she's not truthfully insightful on it. She doesn't know what she's voting for truthfully. And she only knows it from a religious standpoint, but not a political standpoint, which doesn't really make her politically conservative. So I see Megan's point on that that she was only socially conservative. And I definitely saw a lot of that, but I didn't see enough of When it came to the politics thing, I remember her reading off a freaking card every day. Like she had a really, like she was like holding up the card. She was really holding it. She was like giving a pose and everything. And she was holding those cards and she was like reading off of it. And she relied too heavily and too much on the cards, but that's all she had in terms of knowledge, in terms of politics. So it ended up being that Paula Ferris had to give some sort of perspective from the conservative side because nobody else was given it. And I know people keep saying she's independent, but let's just be real here. When did she ever defend Democrats? When did she ever do that? Because I don't remember Paula Ferris ever defending Democrats. I did like that she could debate and she could argue back in a way, but um, it, was, it was not Elizabeth Hasselbeck, but it, she did give a counterpoint of view at least. And I feel that gave stability to the show, but it took away from the journalist aspect of her, which is why they began looking for new people like Sarah Haynes, who was the next in line to be more of the journalist independent seat. And Sarah Haynes, I felt, did it more securely. She did her research. She could really play an independent role because she is independent. And she gives a non-biased non perspective. And I really appreciate it. She's actually probably my favorite panelist that's currently there right now. She's the one I relate to the most. And a lot of people undermine her that she's, she's just filler space. She's just saying what everyone else is saying. But here's the thing. When you look at it like this, everyone else on the panel is coming with an innate bias, a political bias. And she's the only one that doesn't. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that she comes from a non-biased perspective. And I think that's important for someone on the panel to at least look at the issue really for what it is. And I appreciate that she does that. Like, I remember, like, Sunny and Joy will just go to the left right away, usually. And Whoopi will kind of slide in there. Whoopi's kind of a wild card in a way. You don't know what she's necessarily... Sometimes she'll surprise you and you won't necessarily know what she's going to say. But Sarah doesn't just go with that. She'll say... She'll call out what's wrong is wrong on both sides of the coin. And I appreciate that so much. And we need to have more conversations the way Sarah Haynes does it. I really think she's one of the smartest women in television, if I'm being truthfully honest here. And um, I wish more people in the news field and on opinion shows would look at things the way and speak about things the way Sarah does, because I feel that's how we should all be looking at these issues from a truthfully independent perspective if we're going to be intellectually and objectively honest here. And I really appreciate that about Sarah. So, um, and she does it really well with a smile and everything. And, you know, again, I think she's underrated and I think a lot of people undermine her, whereas like, she does have value, and I think, to me, it's nice when there's someone, at least one person on this panel, that can, like, not give a non-biased perspective and can be completely independent. And I like when there's independent people there, because that's my voice. I'm an independent myself, and I don't like looking at issues from a biased perspective. I try to remove that and just look at the issue for what it is and what it objectively is honestly. I don't like to feed into the liberal narrative of clickbait or the conservative narrative of clickbait. I'm going to look at it for what it really is. And I wish more people were like that. I wish, I, I feel we have to 
get to that at some point in order to move forward because I feel we would get to more places successfully that way. And I think we need to have all voices. Like, I do think there needs to be more independent voices in government. In Canada, we do have independent voices, and we do have a lot of third parties. And there are third parties who that run certain provinces. Like, the Green Party runs BC. And it's good to have variations, forms of government. That doesn't mean more government control, but having the best of the best of what... Because I think everyone has something to offer, you know? Like, I think there is good... There's good and bad in everything. And I think put it, trying to find the good in that is what's important. And speaking of the good, let's talk about Abby Huntsman. Let's have a conversation about Miss Abby, Miss First President of the U.S. Um, I really did like her. I think she was a really, again, someone who didn't really have a bias to them necessarily. She did lean a bit more conservatively in some aspects, but for the most part, she did. I did remember her liking. Democrats and stuff to like Pete Buttigieg and people like that. She was cool. And I think she, again, she was criminally underrated, I think, and undermined by everyone. I think she was really lovely as a person. Like she, Joyce, Joy loved her. It was like a Why did you pregnant. skip me? Do you, are you mad? Because you hate me? hugs. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't mind them, but during COVID, that's all right. Oh, I see that's the reason. Uh -huh. You get I your own separate one. one. No some joke. Them. I do. I miss some of them. I yeah, mean, I don't lot, miss yeah. the panel's perfect now. Yes, but you know what? You can. <laughs> I did miss you, Joy. <laughs> but you know what? You can. She was just very easy. She would just speak about issues for truly what they are. Um, and I think she was in a good position as well. She has a journalist background as well, just like Sarah Haynes and Paula Ferris. She has a journalist background and she was there to give an independent perspective. That's what that seat's all about. And she was only there for like a year and a half. She was, it was after um, Sarah left for um, GMA3 and um, right before the pandemic. And then it was sad to see her go though because she was actually a good person and I think she did contribute a lot as well. She was funny, she had the best white girl dance ever. I really enjoyed her, I really did enjoy her. She was also just very like, just like she went with the flow she didn't she didn't take anything personally and i think um the behind the table podcast thank you nathan getty for doing that i really love that and i hope we see season two of that soon she did a really good episode with her and sarah and i thought that was the best match for a podcast for them because they both understand their position and it is a difficult position to navigate around so like abby huntsman was very like I feel she came to the show and didn't realize what she was signing up for pretty much because I think she thought the show was going to be like the way she tested back in 2014 where it was more pop culture than politics back then and truthfully that because she did test the only time she was on the view prior to her joining was in 2014 she was on there twice in June and July of that year that's some view history for you and she was supposed to play the conservative voice. The st yeah, that's right. She was going to be the full-time conservative voice. But that really wasn't her forte. She was better more so at the independent voice because she's a journalist. And so that made sense for her in that regard. But then after a few things behind the scenes happened with ABC's management and another co-host... She quit the show, and then Sarah Haynes came back and was, like, thriving with the job again. And truthfully, this seat is BW's seat. It's the journalist seat, but some people will say it's the fertility suite seat as well. I said fertility suite. Fertility seat as well. So, um, all fair observations. Um, but, yeah, that's that seat. Okay. Let's talk about the conservative seat and let's just get the bad out of the way first because there's a lot of bad we got to talk about first. A lot. So first off, we'll talk, we're, you know when I say bad, you know what I'm going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Alyssa Farah Fawcett, Miss Alexis. The last time we talked was before the Kellyanne Conway appearance and... Here's the thing with the Kellyanne Conway appearance. Whoopi, Joy, Sunny, and Sarah acted very nice. Very nice. They were acting absolutely 
amazing, truthfully, like just fabulous. You know, they did, they conducted the interview with such class. They asked some tough questions, but it didn't go off the rails. Gosh, it might have been one of their best interviews yet with someone that was on the far right because that, that, wow, that's not where I expected it to go, truthfully. However, the mo- the only time it really went off the rails and really got spicy was because of Alyssa Farrah Fawcett. Because Miss Alyssa um, challenged Kellyanne a little bit, and it you know let me just let me just back up a little bit. Let me just back up in reverse because let's see how we let me talk, tell you how we got there because Alyssa was sucking up to Kellyanne and was like, "Oh, if we had you on the campaign, it would have been so much different. Maybe we would have won 2020 and stuff like that." And she kept sucking up. You know, it was everyone that I talked to was like, "If Kellyanne was in charge, it'd be so much different. We would have won." And blah 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 blah. Well, uh, first, Kellyanne, I do want to acknowledge something you said last segment. Um, I remember flying on Air Force One in October of 2020, and two very senior advisors to the president, Dave Bossie and Corey Lewandowski, turned to me and said, we would be winning this race if it was Kellyanne running the campaign. So I think that there's there's some real truth to the direction it went the second time around, and that perhaps you having a more senior role would have changed that. Um, but I have to ask you something. We served together um, briefly in the White House my second time. Uh, I admired you the first time when I was working for Pence. You were very helpful What happened to me. the second time? Oh, the second time? No, I, I just meant I looked up to you. I was in, we were in more comparable roles. I was in more junior role the first time. And um, Kellyanne wasn't buying that. Kellyanne was like, I see you. I see right through you, girl. I see where the spotlight is landing on you. Is more like it. Because she's like, Alyssa... Every, you're only you're only wanting people to like you because you see your name in lights, and I don't choose to see my name in lights. And I'm just like, Kellyanne had a point there, I will say, and we're going to get to that point in a second, but it activated her because it was like Pokemon. She got activated. What's going on? Okay, so but you, you still just, sound, I, but you're still supporting Donald Jan- Trump Jan- now. Live on January 6th. Alyssa, if you're saying that, Somehow you think we're supposed to think that you've seen a light and not just see your name in lights. That's not fair. What do you mean I'm still supporting you? You're not answering the question. How is man qualified to be president if he incited? He's not the president, Joe Biden. I know, but you're you're talking about maybe a second term. You've never denounced Donald Trump. That's when he incited a violent mob that attacked. I did that day. First of all, I didn't. But then you went right back to him. Okay, so what? What were? And because, let me tell you something. She got called out directly in that moment. And that's why she gave the pushback she gave. Because someone called out for what she was, finally called her out for what she was truly doing. And the mask just slipped. The mask slipped, the makeup was melting, and it was, well, the makeup wasn't melting, but in my mind it was. And, um... Yeah, she really pushed back on Kellyanne and was like, oh, you're just going to defend him now? And I was like, this was the spiciest moment of the interview. Have to say that was really great television. I really enjoyed that, I will say. But let me say this. Number one, Alyssa, you need to take what you did with Kellyanne and start applying it to the Hot Topics table. Because that is what you need to start doing every single day on The View if you're going to be the opposing view. You need to bring that polarizing personality to the table. Secondly, I do see Kelly Zan's points because this past week, Alyssa was scheduled for five days. Five days. That was on the original schedule. Here's the receipt. You know I'm going to come with the receipts. I really respect Sunny for always coming with a receipt. So I'm just, I really like her intense research. So I do my intense research. That inspires me to do intense research, truthfully. So with that being said, she was there five days a week. 
And for that week, she only showed up for two days. Two days. And you want to know why? Because most of those days, the view was going to be preempted, which meant they weren't going to be on air. And the days it was pre... But it still was going to be shown on online, like on YouTube, Twitter, and all that stuff. But w- with that being said, the days it was preempted, she wasn't there. And she was, guess where? Running off to CNN on TV in the spotlight. In the spotlight. Now, I feel this was a business motive, in my opinion, just from my observation, because... The business motive is she wants them to hire her now rather than later. And this is what a lot of people do. They will go to other places just to scare the people behind the scenes a little bit. The people at ABC that are there because they want more money or they want a decision to be made to know if they're going to get the job or not. But I don't think that was a smart business tactic in my opinion because there are people in this job that are more that are better at it than her, truthfully. Lindsey Granger, Tara Setmer, and Stephanie Grisham says hello. So there's three other people that are better at it than her that are qualified, and I think she jeopardized her job a little bit there. I think she jeopardized her opportunity there, truthfully. So um, not the smartest move in the world, in my opinion. Um... I feel Kellyanne had a point, and ever since the Kellyanne thing, there has been more that's been brought up of her. Now we're going to go into the closet. Like, we're here, I, here I promote let's come out of the closet, but we're going to go in the closet a little bit because there are some skeletons we got to bring up to the surface. Well, actually, I didn't bring them up to the surface. A bunch of other people were bringing it up to the surface, and I didn't know about these skeletons because I didn't quite understand. Because a lot of people have been saying for the past, since Alyssa's been testing, that she has a very controversial family past. And I didn't quite understand it. I didn't quite understand it until pe- people have been coming out with receipts. Ever since the Kelly Ann interview, a lot of people have been coming up with things that have, been, have sent me a lot of things on her. And I was like, <sighs> I was taken back by that a lot. Like, I didn't think she was... I didn't think she was that controversial, to be honest with you. I just thought, oh, she likes, she's someone that's super into politics. She's a well educated woman and she wants to help her country. And she doesn't, she went into the Trump administration with a good conscience and she didn't really necessarily, she thought she could do some good in there and that's why she quit. But this really changed my mind on a lot of things. It really opened my eyes. It was quite eye-opening. So let's dig into it a little bit. Let's deep dive and thrive. That's what I say on Obscure Nick a lot. Let's deep dive and thrive. So first off, her family apparently was one of the first far-right conspiracy theorists in politics where her father, her father, her father... I'm sure she's not going to brag about her father, but, and I see why she doesn't say my father, my father, my father, because it ain't a good look. It ain't a good look, honey. Like, I thought, I thought Megan had some skeletons in her closet, but this really takes the cake. It's like, Megan had skeletons in her closet, but Alyssa Farah was like, hold my beer. And um, her father, her father, her father, was one of the first far-right conspiracy theorists that was part of, like, the birther movement, which is, like, the people who question mainly people of color, um, ethnicity, and nationality towards the country, such as, you know how people... You know how Trump said on The View, like, 10 years ago, that he was questioning Obama's birth certificate a lot? Her father is the one that's responsible for that. Her family is actually, and I think she and she approved of this stuff too. By the way, from what I was told, and I was like taken back by that in a lot of ways because he, the her father, her family is the reason why there's people like Trump who question certain people's certificate for political game. Like they go that far deep in. And it's really, cre- it's really the pinnacle 
of modern day racism, truthfully. It is truthfully the pinnacle for it. As Erica Jane said in Real Housewives, that you got to call it racist. You got to call it for what it is. Otherwise, people fill in the blanks with other stuff. I'm calling it for what it is. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills lately, and I've just been making so many comparisons to Real Housewives and The View. Okay, so, like, I am. I watched Friday's show. Okay, here's the thing. Alyssa was supposed to be there, like, all five days of last week, but she only showed up for two. And on those other three days, she was on CNN, like, the whole day. So I'm like, did she drop out or something? And then, okay, so with this Friday show, I felt Joy and Anna were saying very specific things that were targeting her. Joy was just pretty much talking about all these, like, Trump apologists who are going on these apology tours that even come on The View sometimes. Now all, like, recovering addicts, Mm -hmm. recovering addicts in, in in the Trump world that come on, even on this show, they come on this show, they go on other shows, and they're suddenly turning on on Trump. Where were you all that time when he was... Talking about grabbing women yeah. by their nether regions. Yeah. When he made fun of the war hero, John McCain. Yeah. When he, he criticized uh, soldiers as being Bolts cowards. Families. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like kind of taken back by it because who else would she be talking about it was when anna said that they have ukraine flags on their profile now pretending to be pro ukraine and all these things now and i'm just like and then i look at Alyssa's profile and it's a ukraine flag so I'm just like, oh my god, like they're like they're being very specific towards her and it's and let's just be real, if they were really talking about Stephanie Grisham, they would be talking about big eyes instead of big Ukraine flags. Like let's just be real about that. Yeah, it doesn't look like the job is looking really good for her because she only showed up two out of five days of the week. Like, she, I feel, blew it. I feel she blew it in a lot of ways because why are you showing only two out of five days of the week? And here's the thing. she was. It's not like she couldn't work. She was on CNN. On those days, she wasn't on The View. She was on CNN. And I feel she only showed up one of those days because it was her birthday and she wanted, she was going to see if The View was going to do a big birthday thing for her. So um, they gave her a small cake. It was very small. But yeah. um, But, and she, again, same as before, nothing has changed my opinion. She tried, she tried to say something, and then she got backed into a corner almost immediately by Sunny. You could see it on Sunny's face. <sighs> that is Alyssa Farah for you. That is her. Not a fan. Not a fan. Let's talk about Tara Setmayer for a second. Let's talk about her, because I feel she improved a lot. She's been improving each time she's been on the show. She stepped it up each time. And I'm like, girl, excellent job. Excellent. I feel she gave a pushback. She could really do this job. And she did it to pure excellence, I feel like. The only thing I will say is that she needs to work on studying pop culture a little more and work a little more with Mesh. Meshing on the, I think when you when the pop culture topics come in, that's your opportunity to mesh with the ladies. That's how Lindsay did it, and Lindsay did an excellent job with it. But for the most part, Tara stepped it up. She is my second favorite out of all of them, and I I really appreciate her effort. I think you did a good job, Tara. Um, and you know, I honestly don't agree with her. I don't think she's like Anna at all. Like a lot of people have been comparing her to Anna. I would have thought about that in 2019, but we're not in 2019 anymore. That was never Trump era. Now we're in 2022, where the game is different. And I feel if Trump doesn't get into 2024, and if it's someone else, I feel Tara will just improve, and she will really show us for who she is. And, you know, I think... 
I, I was, I'm going to say this. I was wrong about her. And I'm so glad she's, I'm like so happy to say it. Like I'm almost in, oh my God, I'm in tears. Like I am so, like I'm so passionate about it. I'm so happy for her. I'm so, you know, I'm glad I was wrong about someone. I'm so glad when I'm wrong about someone and it's for a good reason. It's for a good reason. And um, yeah, she came through. She came through. So I like her. I like her a lot. So I think she did good. And I hope we see her as guest host in season 26. I don't think she's getting the job necessarily, but good good job for you, Tara, for putting a good fight up, I think. Um, I don't... Stephanie Grisham, I don't think is coming back, truthfully. I just don't think she is. It's... We haven't gotten... She would have been back by now, I feel like. If, if anything, we're going to see her one more time, but she's definitely not getting that job. But we'll talk about her a little more. I want to talk about her a little more later in the... In the View History show, because in the next segment we'll talk about it. Let's talk about Lindsay Granger living in sin, Lindsay. Living in sin. Um, she was there last week, like the week before Alyssa's week, and she thrived. She thrived, honey. She did the job to pure excellence, as expected. And... Um, she gave the opposing view as usual. It got heated. Her and Sunny had some good back and forth, and her and Whoopi had some good back and forth, and her and Joy had some good back and forth. Good. I wish I had an audience because I would I would really just play off with that in a lot of ways. I'd have so much fun with an audience. Truthfully, I feel um, Lindsay did it to excellence. I noticed some days she was playing her cards just right, and she was like, you know... I'm just going to sit back a bit. I'm going to let, I'm going to try to gel with the women. And that's the way to do it, girl. Like, good job. Excellent. You played your cards perfectly right. Like, 100, 100. And that's how you do it. I've been watching The View for the longest time. Like, I watched back in the Sherry Shepard days, the Rosie O'Donnell days, and Elizabeth Hasselbeck days. And truthfully, those hires were completely different from the ones after Barbara left. Barbara Walters' hires were the best, period. The best. There is no one really afterwards that really comes to that level. But I will say this. With Lindsay, it feels like a natural fit. She's doing the view the way Barbara visioned it. I, I truthfully feel Lindsay is someone Barbara would hire. I truthfully believe that. And I'm not trying to... And I don't say that about many of you co's that came after Barbara Walters. But she is definitely one of them where I feel Barbara would have hired her. Because she does it to the best of the abilities. And if Lindsay is hired, she's not only going to be the first black conservative in daytime television. She will also be the first woman since Elizabeth Hasselbeck that could do this job to excellence. Truthfully, objectively speaking, I think she would do it to, to the the best to the to the way Elizabeth would do it and I think she would she would do this she would do Elizabeth Hasselbeck proud. She really would. And I just like her and she's a really nice person by the way. I've spoken with her a few times as well. Um, her and I follow each other and everything, and we talk sometimes, and she's really cool, and she's really genuine. I hope... Okay, so she's on this week, which is a really good sign. Really good sign. Alyssa, you had a chance last week, and it blew up. It blew up, simply. But Lindsay, girl, get that all in check. Get it all in check, and thrive with it. Thrive with it this week. I wish this week they would announce her as permanent co-host. And I hope they offer a deal this week. A lot of people think Alyssa Fair is already hired. I'm not fully buying it yet until that actually shows up. A lot of people think, oh, Alyssa's going to just take it and everything. And I'm just like, no, I don't think she's going to take it. Not yet. This is still a competition, people. And it's not over yet. 
It is not over yet, but it would be nice if Lindsay was announced this week because the week after we have vacation. That's right, the Bahamas trip. And can you imagine Lindsay on the Bahamas trip? I think the ladies would have a blast with her because I think Alyssa, Lindsay is the life of the party, truthfully. And I think Sunny, Sarah, Joy, Whoopi would love her. They would love to go to a week with the Bahamas with her. So I, it would be so awesome if Lindsay was just on the Bahamas trip. That would be the best thing ever. Like that would just be the best way to announce her, truthfully. Hopefully. So I hope, but I, I could just be jumping ahead, but it would be cool if that was the case. But good job to you, Lindsay. So I'm, Lindsay is the one in my opinion, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. It feels natural. It doesn't feel forced. With Alyssa, I feel it's forced. And with a lot of people that came after in, in see, from season 18 to um, 25, I feel there's a lot of people that were just felt forced in there but it didn't naturally work. It didn't naturally evolve. Whereas like Lindsay, it feels like it naturally evolves and she does the job of the conservative to pure excellence, pure excellence living in sin Lindsay. Okay. Let's move on to the next topic. So a lot of people say that joy is leaving the view in 2022, like in this season, because in 2019, she did an interview with Ramin Statuta that she is going to leave The View at age 80 and retire and possibly go back to Italy. But it was only a maybe at the time because she confirmed on the show later that she wasn't leaving and she wouldn't leave like that. But it seems like it's more like... There seem, there's signs of it. Let's just put it like that. Because... There was that week, the last week of April, and I've been meaning to talk about this with you guys for a while. The last week of April, her and Amber Ruff, Ruffin, Ruffin was there, and then also Jane Lynch was there. Why were they on for a full week? Well, Amber Ruffin was there for, for pretty much the full week, and then Jane Lynch was there Friday. Why were they on? And a lot of people think they were chemistry testing. Okay, first off, I want to say Amber Ruffin Ain't it. She just ate it. I was not feeling her at all. It felt very disconnected. She feels like someone that needs a script and does better with a script, truthfully. She just wasn't it for Joy's seat. And I'm sorry, but truthfully, there's a lot of expectation with Joy's seat because Joy is the one. She is the view. She's the longest lasting survivor. She's irreplaceable in my view. And um, yeah, she is the queen of the view. She is the first lady of the view, truthfully. No question about it. No question. That's right. Mama Joy always came through these past 25 years for us. Even when she wasn't there, she would come through somehow. Because she was there for the 4,000th show, I remember. And she was there quite a bit in season 18 as well. But, yeah, I don't... Joy leaving The View would be detrimental for me. Because she's the last... She's Her and Whoopi are the last people that are BW hires that are still on this show. And to me, that would be... And she's the only OG last left on this show. Which is crazy. Um, and I couldn't see the, it's hard to envision the view without joy. We had two years of that. And truthfully, those two years didn't even feel like the view, but it's a hard reality to come to because she's irreplaceable. The only person I would want to see in Joy's seat, truthfully, is Sherry Shepard. But that won't happen because Sherry Shepard has her own show coming out, which good for Sherry. I'm so proud of Sherry that she's thriving like that. But um, still, I think Sherry Shepard's the closest to joy we could get. The only other person I would say that I feel could get there and so also before that, I don't think Michelle Collins would be the right replacement. Michelle Collins is better for late night. She's not daytime palatable. And that's just my opinion. I liked Michelle on The View. I felt she was very unhinged, truthfully. But I like that about her. She was messy. 
She was messy, but she was too messy for daytime, which is because she's more of a late night comedian. That's the thing. That's the difference. There's a difference between late night and daytime because there's a different vibe to both of those. And there's a difference between the two. So I don't think she would be the one. I'm not really for that. But um, the only other person that's currently there that I feel should be full time is Anna Navarro. Truthfully, if Anna Navarro sticks by Biden for these next couple of years, then hire her. Make her full time. The only way I don't see Anna taking that job, because Anna can give us be entertaining and she can give us jokes. That's why I would want her in Joy's position. Um, she's the one that makes me laugh th- the most because if when Joy's not there, Anna fills the room. She fills the room of what Joy gave before. And that just makes sense. So I would want her as full-time in that position. Let's make it make sense, people. So um, truthfully, I feel she would she would thrive in that. And But the only thing is I'm not 100% sure if she would take it because she lives in Miami. And she goes back and forth all the time. She would have to be there five days a week. And I don't know if she would want to be in New York five days a week and in Miami two days a week, truthfully, because her husband lives there and everything, and she doesn't want to move out of Miami. Plus, I've heard she makes more out of being on The View as just a guest for two days a week, and then on CNN and Telemundo. Like, she would have to to quit Telemundo, I feel like, or CNN if she got The View full-time, and I feel like it would be too much for her. But I would like her to be on The View full time if that was the case. Because the perfect panel does not exist. But I feel I just cracked the code here. I feel I cracked the code. Like completely. Because here are my suggestions for the perfect panel if Joy leaves next season. Whoopi, Sunny, Sarah, Anna, Lindsay. And then on Fridays, Tara or Stephanie. But here's the panel, because a lot of people like to talk about Sarah is leaving too. When you listen, when there's, when there, when people are talking in the streets, as Wendy Williams said, this is a whole Wendy Williams dedication video, by the way, whole Wendy Williams dedication podcast. But when you're, you, when people are talking in the streets, you gotta listen. But here's the thing. Here's the panel. If Sarah leaves, Whoopi, Sunny, Anna, Lindsay, Stephanie in Sarah's position, and then Tara on Fridays. Tara becoming the Friday girl. So we, so the perfect panel does not exist, but mm, code cracked. I think that's. I think that sounds about correct to me. Um, so yeah, those are my suggestions. Those are my suggestions. Um, but yeah, I I don't know if Joy's leaving the view fully. I'm. St- I need more signs, and I think we'll find out in July, late July latest, if Joy's leaving The View or not. But we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. Anyways, thank you for watching The View History. I am Sarah Kellyson. Go check out all my stuff, and let's talk and have a great time, everyone, and enjoy The View History.